they just use those words for killing sprees, I guess. <laughs> no idea what is that. No, no. Oh my goodness, I think I, I've already failed it, to be honest. Uh, if I don't know words on the step one, what will happen on the step two? Tears, cup... No way. What? Whew, well, welcome here. Welcome back, hopefully. My name is Darian St. Martin, and today we are going to do something that makes me a bit nervous, to be honest. And I will test my vocabulary size. Now, for the context, I have passed IELTS with uh, the overall band score of 8.0, uh, I mean the IELTS academic, and I prepared for just a bit under a month in three and a half weeks. So it was a big jump for me from B2 to C1 on my own in under a month because I was so motivated to get into that business school that I applied to and get the full scholarship. So that is basically what really drove me to this success. And now I want to test how many words do I actually know? If you are also curious how many words uh, a certain band score on IELTS or even a score on TOEFL means, then definitely click on that info card there to have a look at the video where I explain each band score with their results. But now let me start and here I have my laptop where I'm going to actually take this test. I'm doing this for the first time and I am honestly nervous. <laughs> uh, right, so I hope this will be easy. Let's see. So check the box for each word you know at least one definition for. Okay, clear. By the way, you can also take this test. I will leave the link in the description box down below. It's completely free and it helps you to understand where you're at in terms of the number of words you know in English. Right, um, don't check boxes for words you know you've seen before, but whose meaning you aren't exactly sure of. Okay, so let's do it. Step one of three, measure broad vocab level. Okay, so these must be very easy words, right? Like, think, go, look, of course. I know these words after ask next. Pay, while, hope, of course, uh, close tomorrow, near, ring. Interesting, will there be any words that I don't know in this tab? Bright, uh, a tool, a moon, sure, the moon. So, constraint, clay, stuns, stands, meadow, plank, uh, no, I'm not sure what, what a plank is. I mean, I know the plank, but I, I think it, it ends with Q, U, E but not K. <laughs> okay, not sure about that one. Ledge, uh, respite, reproach, ostrich, a jar, sapling? What is sapling? Haven't even heard of that, to be honest. I will have to Google it. You know, the, the coolest thing about that is that you can actually write down words that you don't know and then you go Google them and then you learn them and you're brilliant, you know, <laughs> very specific words in English. Yeah, uh, invagal, invagal. No idea what is that, no, no. From food or gas, uh, that's when you bloat or your stomach is bloated. Mm, raiment, no. Ledger domain. Oh, wow, this word, I, I think I know that. I think it has to do with music, actually. It's like, it's like slow music. Ledger domain, let me check that. I'm very interested. No, it's actually a skillful use of one hand when performing conjuring tricks. It's a deception, it's like trickery. I think it can be used when talking about magicians who perform like hand tricks. So, yeah. Wow, that was a tricky one. No, I don't know that one. And Sparge, I don't know that one either. Okay, let's continue. I hope... Oh my goodness, I think I, I've already failed it, to be honest, because <laughs> uh, if I don't know words on the step one, what will happen on the step two? God knows what. Right, uh, let's do it. Wow, there are lots of words here. Uh, measure narrow vocab level. 
Dagger, yes, streamline. Streamline is such a buzzword, by, by the way, especially in like corporations and in startups. Uh, when people talk about streamlining their um, business processes or their value chain or anything else. Okay, napkin, resilient. Resilient, again, that is also a buzzword of 2020, I guess, maybe even 19. But the word resilience and the adjective resilient, I see a lot everywhere in like articles, especially about women who are advised to build resilience when, um, like when working or when just dealing with everyday life. A topol, simmer, tad, or steed. Not sure. Nether. Okay, this word is interesting. I guess it has three different pronunciations. You can say slough, you can say sloth, and you can also say sl slew uh, in, in American English. And that means a swamp, like a place where there is a lot of mud and you can get drained. So, an interesting word, not sure what is the exact uh, pronunciation that is a widespread, like a common spread one, because I don't really see this word often, but I definitely know what that means. Deflect, whim, accomplish, easy, shrill, stubble, rampant, judicious. Does it have to do anything with Jews? Probably not. Okay, with a tandem. By the way, tandem bicycles are very interesting. You know, those bicycles where you can ride together. I haven't ever tried it, but I think it's such an unusual experience. Especially it can be romantic when you are with your other half and you know, when you're just riding around and he's obviously in the front doing all the hard work and you're like a bit in the back relaxing. Okay, sketching. Rind, strife, uh, weasel, or vessel, weasel. I don't know what that is. Bowl, spool, spool. I don't know what spool is, to be honest. Spool. Looks like a very easy word, you know? God knows what that is. Rith, uh, also. Also, an interesting thing. This word looks like a rith, like a rath. Rith, rath that you put on your door when it's Christmas. Uh, that big thing that, it's a wreath, yes, of course, but it's written with like E uh, and A and um, you put that, it's like made out of leaves uh, and you put that on your doors usually when it's Christmas time. But that's not that thing because the, the spelling here is different. So I'm not sure what that is. Pittance, no. Wow, guys, I guess, am I failing? I don't know, we have many rows to go. Um, shrivel looks very familiar, to be honest. Do you know what that is? Comment down below if you do. I can't explain shrivel, so... Next one, ballast, yes, mayhem. Oh, wow, mayhem. I know this word from video games, you know, when there is like a streak of death, of like kills, uh, especially, I guess, in Dota. Do you pronounce that like this, Dota? Uh, so, I guess, especially in that game, when you have like a streak of kills, it says, at some point, mayhem. And there are also other words like killing spree, or rampage, or mayhem. So, they just use those words for killing spree, I guess. <laughs> that is my vocabulary level, guys. What? What can I do about that? I'm sorry. Um, rascal. Mm, no. Cover. Cover. Looks like covert, but it's not that. Signet? Signet? I think it's something you use in Leo, like instead of your signature. I'm not sure how it's spelled though. How, I mean, how it's pronounced. Signet? Signet? If we say signature, then probably it should be signet. But then we also have sign. Um, okay, I will take it as as I know that because I know the definition, but 
There's also the struggles of a non-native person because I'm Russian, English is not my native language. I uh, learned it while I was at school and that's my struggle pretty much all the time because I don't know oh, what is the correct pronunciation of many new words, like unfamiliar words for me. Befit, befit, no. Lower, no. Extol, yes. Tipo, strop, no. Strop? Again, looks very easy, doesn't it? But I don't know what that is. I'm being honest with you guys. We'll see what I get in the end. Stirrup, yes. Uh, pastiche? Pastiche? <laughs> Why is it so difficult? Eavesdrop, yes. You know, to eavesdrop, it's such an interesting word because it actually means to overhear someone doing something or speaking about something. And I guess, I honestly, I haven't really heard people uh, saying this word, but I know its definition and I like how it, it looks like, I like how it sounds. I just, you know, genuinely like the word, but I don't really see people using it. Let's make it, it common, guys. Let's use rare words. They are so fancy and cool. Squelch. So squelch is, again, a very rare word, but I know what that means because I read books in English, guys. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But um, this word, um, I guess I, I saw it in like a Gen Air book or something. Um, it's a sound that your boot makes when you're uh, going in mud. It's like squelch, squelch. Great explanation. <laughs> but yeah, I know what it is. Squall, that one I don't know. Squall. Abscond. Abscond. No. Doesn't ring a bell for me. Shard. No. Barnacle. Yes. Chest. Chaste. Suffus. Suffuse. Oh my goodness. You have literally many, many different ways of saying this. Like saying these, some of these words. Cozy. Thank God. A, an easy word. Um, ingratiate. To botch. You know, to botch is, again, a very interesting word. Uh, because in Russian, we have our traditional dish that is like a red beetroot soup with cabbage and with many other vegetables. It's called borscht or borscht, if you say that in Russian. Um, and it looks quite similar to botch, but it's a completely different thing. To botch something, it means to uh, perform your duties carelessly. You can like botch the job that you do. It means that you're bad at it. Discomfort, burgeon, tawdry. No, not for me. <laughs> Redolent, nip, rancid, dirge, dirge. Oh no, I don't know these words. I guess I, sh I should just move forward. Portmanteau. I know this one because I learned French. Chivi. Other. I guess it has to do with like an organ in, in a body <laughs> of a person or an animal. I think like something rings a bell for me, but I can't say what it is. Can you go Google that word and see if I'm close or not? Green prig, yes, finally. Uh, Sally rompus bugbear. A bugbear uh, is um, is something that causes you constant fear or anxiety, um, such as this test to me right now. <laughs> um, manacle, prurient, prurient. Who knows those words? Do you? Does any of you know all of those words that you see here? I'm very curious. If you do, please leave a comment below. Lampoon looks, looks like raccoon, but that's not. And looks like a lamp as well. Looks like, you know, a mix between a raccoon and a lamp. And you get a lampoon. No idea what that is. Semi parsimonious. 
not even going to pretend that I know what that is. Uh, Pearl one, no, visage. Well, I, I know this one again because, because of French. Visage is face. A sobriquet, so that one is amusing because it's again a French word, kind of, I guess, because, because it has the same ending as a bouquet, for example. And sobriquet is like a, a name, a nickname that you give to someone. And do you guys still use it? By the way, uh, it also looks like a mix, like a mix between sober and a briquet or bouquet. It's like a sobriquet. <laughs> Um, okay, a mokesh. Not sure what that is. No, not gonna take that. A soothsayer. I know who that is. It's like a man who can predict your future, like a fortune teller. This is because like the etymology of this is that soothing someone means to to calm someone down. Maybe a soothsayer is someone who tells the future, which is calming to people. I don't know. Uh, disjunctive, yes, polymath, yes, Lothario, no, Mian, Mian, est-ce que c'est écrit en français? Je ne suis pas sûre, mais it resembles me French. Uh, Trollop, Fuddle, yes, Puckish, no, Noisum, um, seems like someone who makes lots of noise, like noisome, but probably it's not. Melange. Yes. I'm not sure how it's pronounced though, but it's, you know, it's like a mix of something. I guess it's a word that is used uh, usually in cookbooks and when you kind of mix some mixtures together, you get a melange, melange. Don't know how to say that, but I know what that means. A late motif. Yes, I guess it's German. Uh, the German origin of this word, but it also means like the main theme, the main subject that goes through a um, piece of music or an art piece or maybe a book. Verdure. Guys, is that a French language test? Because that is, that means verdure in, en français, in French, and that means like greenery. And apparently it means the same in English. Well, not apparently, it does mean the same in English. But it's crazy how many French words we see here. Next is imbroglio. And this sounds Italian and I... Surprisingly, but I know what that is. It means like a very confusing situation, I guess. And I don't remember where I know that word from, nor how do I know how to pronounce that. but. It's definitely imbroglio, maybe because it sounds Italian. And I guess, yes, the, the roots of these words are Italian. Sedulous, no. Maladroit, maladroit. <laughs> maybe it's not funny anymore, but to me, again, it looks very French because droit, uh, the second part, droit, droit en français, c'est uh, et, uh, I, I've just mixed three languages, guys. French, Russian, and English. Crazy. You, you can imagine what, what what is going on in my head right now. But droit, this part of the word, means a right in French. And then malade uh, means a an ill person. And malad maladroit, zero idea what that can be in, in English. That's crazy. In politic. Thank God. Port boiler, yes. Uh, cup tears, cup. No way. Bibulous, are you kidding? I don't know what that is. Malapropism. So, malapropism, I know this one. I will explain that because uh, it's, it's a funny word. Um, that word, it's like a term when you use uh, one word instead of the other because they sound similarly and you confuse them. We have flamenco and flamingo um, and some people say like dance a flamingo instead of dance flamenco because flamenco is a dance and then flamingo it definitely is not but they sound similar and when a person substitutes to similarly sounding 
words, it's called malapropism. I, I've just educated you a bit. Um, thank me later. I don't know where I know this from, but yes. Tricorn though, I don't know what that is, although it looks mm, easier, much easier. Tanabrouse, Tanabrouse, un bon point in French, probably, but in English, un bon point? No. Valet, valetudiranian. No, please. <laughs> what? When my struggles will end, uh, Senecal, no, looks like a pentacle, pentacle, is this a word? Should be. Cantal, I guess it, it has to do with like with horses, equipment that you use for horses, but I don't know what that is exactly. Estivation, um, surprisingly, I know this word. Estivation is a period of uh, sleep of an insect. I guess of sleep or I don't know like the period of when an insect is inactive I guess because they're sleeping what else could they do uh, or maybe you know when a caterpillar becomes a butterfly this period is called estivation the best explanations ever on this channel okay regnant regnant is easy it means like a ruling the British Queen Elizabeth is the regnant queen so she's the ruling queen uh, Terpsichorean I know the Queen Terpsichora in Russian Terpsichora. Uh, we learned this in school, in like middle school. So I guess it means something connected to her because it can be nothing else. So I will take that as I know that because it literally could be nothing else. Um, Philigenous? Philigenous. One a romancy. Is this a new sexuality style or what is this one a romancy there are so many sexualities right now guys honestly that i i can't keep up with all of them maybe that one is a new one no idea uh tatter demelian looks like like you know a name of a king or a queen in a video game a willy vo caitiff no Hypnopompic has to do with hypnosis, probably. I don't know what that is. Opsimast. Oh, right. I know this one. Opsimast is someone who starts learning something quite late in their life. So that's an obs opsimath. Can I be considered an opsimath if I start learning like Chinese right now? I don't think so. Honestly, I think this is not a great word because it's never late for learning. Honestly, if like a grandma or granddad when they are in their 70s decide to learn something new, like a new skill, maybe making YouTube videos, I wouldn't call them an opsimath to be honest because kind of feels disrespectful, doesn't it? Um, because, you know, they, they just want to learn. Everyone can learn. It's not like, oh, you started learning late in your life. Shame on you. You're an opsimoth. <laughs> That's crazy. Okay, pool, pool, pool. I don't know what that is. And you chorus it. No, I had to read it for you guys, but I don't know what that is. Okay, so looks poor. <laughs> uh, let's see how many words do I actually know. Find out, I'm gonna close my eyes, find out what did I get. What? 24,000! Most native English adult speakers who have taken this test fall in the range of 20,000 to 35,000 words. So I'm kind of in the beginning of the native English speaker range. But that is very impressive, to be honest. I'm, I'm very impressed, wow. And for foreign learners of English, we found that the most common vocabulary size is from 2,500 to 9,000. Okay, so there are most, yeah, most people are in this range. So it's kind of until 11,000, maybe 12,000. Guys, I'm, I'm, I'm shocked, not gonna lie. I thought I would be around, somewhere around like 15,000 maybe 
maybe 10,000. It's already not bad. So definitely share your results if you take the test uh, and go here, share in the comments or text me on Instagram and tell me your result. I will be very interested to know. It was an interesting one for this channel. Um, I, I have filmed such a video for the first time. If you liked it, definitely let me know in the comments and press that like button so that I know that you, you enjoyed this as much as I did. I honestly did enjoy this a bit. And I will see you very soon in my next ones. Ciao!